There's a short preaching that's on my heart that I'm going to preach today. Thank you. And it's to remind us of the kingdom. It's to remind us that we are citizens of a kingdom. We live in the world, but we're not part of the world. That means we're not part of the world system. Unfortunately, we think of ourselves from the world system and not from the kingdom system. That's God's system which is a king's system. The world system is a so-called democracy or capitalism. Capitalism is not the great thing that we all think. If you understand what that is, it's actually the stronger using the poorer. That's what capitalism does. It is the minority, or let's say 5%, holding 95% at ransom. Because they own whatever it is that produces what you need. That's capitalism. That's the heart, the foundation of someone who is in capitalism. It's money, it's power, it's owning over someone weaker or so they perceive to be. It's the power over. But that's the system of the world. And we tart it up with a name called democracy. <coughs> democracy. <coughs> Put it on the, the kitchen side, but let me just show you. If you have your Bible, go to Matthew 4, 17. Now remember, God always sends a herald or a prophet or someone in front before he does or before he speaks to his people concerning direction, concerning correction, concerning vision, etc., etc. It was no different when he sent his son. He sent the cousin, what would have been the, the natural born Jesus, John the Baptist. <coughs> and John the Baptist only preached one message. If you've seen the film, if you've read your Bible, you'll know what that message is. It's called repent, for the kingdom is near. Say the kingdom is near. The kingdom is near. Say repent. Repent. Because until we repent, we can't do nothing. He didn't say the kingdom is near. He says repent, for the kingdom is near. So there's, there's, a, there's an access, action or something to that kingdom. It's called repent. And repent means to turn. 180 and go the other way. Not 360 and come back. So if I'm standing there, and that's my world of sin, I have to turn around and face Christ, who's paid the price, and that area is sin free. If I walk in it, I'm walking in peace, life abundant, and life eternal. If I turn around, what am I going to see? Sin. So repentance is an action of mentally looking at Christ, believing in Christ, and walking in that zone of sinlessness in faith. That God will not let you go further than you can bear. Amen. But we have become in the world called democracy with our human thinking. You've heard the term, it's not humane. It's not earthly man. That's your natural. But we are made in the supernatural because he said he took the dust of the earth, he formed a man and he breathed his life into it. 
That life is a likeness and image of God. That life is a natural ways of God. But supernatural. Amen. I'm getting somewhere. I want you to understand that we are not earth man trying to be spirit man. We are a spirit man surrounded by an earth body so we can move in the natural things that God has placed. The earth. The things that we tend and look after. Genesis 1.26 it said, let's make man in our likes and image. Genesis 1.27 he said, let's give them dominion over. Then he lists all the natural things that we have dominion over. Where do we have the dominion? We have the dominion in the likes and image of God. That means in the spirit of God. That means in the way that God will think and his heart and his compassion accept. It doesn't mean you have the power to create human life like God. No, you don't. We are not God. Forget that. No, they're fine. Leave them, bro. Come on. Let them just do their thing. We, we are not God. But our heart to love and to take care of something as God will take care of you. That's what we are. That's what we have. That's the spiritual strength and ability that we have. Genesis 1.28, he said, he blessed them indeed. That word blessed means ability. In other words, if you put that word in, it said, God gave them the ability to, and then again, he confirms what he said in 27. Now it's become on earth, in the natural. He's now brought man in, and remember, all this is done in the spiritual realm. Man wasn't even made then. From Genesis 1.26, Right through Genesis 1, it wasn't until Genesis 2. Then he made man. Once he planned everything in the spiritual realm, Father, Son, Holy Spirit had their committee, let us make. Not the angels, it was the committee of God. We call it the Trinity. I take it you have the Trinity in the Presby Church. So all of that was happening in the spiritual realm before it became in the natural realm. What God had prepared for man to have dominion over. That's why in the, in the Lord's Prayer it says, Thy kingdom come. Thy. Our Father which art in heaven, holy be thy name. Hallowed be thy name. Means holy is thy name. Thy kingdom come. Because it was God's kingdom that he placed down here on earth. How? In himself, in you. You would create the kingdom of God because you'd be thinking, acting with love and compassion of God. So John was preaching the kingdom of God. Jesus Christ himself, Matthew 4, 17, if someone's there they can read it. Should I read it? From then on, Jesus began to preach. From then on. This is Jesus' first preaching. John the Baptist has been preaching it and he's been baptising. Now Christ comes and he preaches. He said he preached from then on. He says, turn from your sins or in the King James you say, repent of your sins, turn to God, because the kingdom of heaven is near. There is a kingdom of heaven, a kingdom of God. The two. Part of the same. Jesus preached to preach is to proclaim. Proclaiming the truth. Because God is not a man that he should lie. So remember I said 119 verse 89. His word stands firm in heaven. Christ is the word and he speaks the word. So Christ is speaking the truth. Repent. Turn away from your sins. If 
we confess to be Christians, me included, and we are still in our sins of old, we need to check what God was following. I know that sounds terrible, but I'm afraid the Word of God stands as the Word of God. Check it. What God are you listening to? What Jesus Christ did you put your trust in? Stay in Matthew 4, go to verse 23, 24. He says, Jesus travelled throughout Galilee, teaching in the synagogues, preaching everywhere. That's everywhere, it means everywhere. The good news about the kingdom. And he healed people and every kind of sickness and disease. News, 24. News about to spread far beyond the borders of Galilee so that the sick were soon coming to be healed from a far away Assyria. And whatever their illness and pain, or if they were possessed by demons, or were epileptics, or were par paralyzed, he healed them all. All who come, what that is saying there, is that all who comes to Christ will be healed. Amen. But he preached the good news. The good news is the kingdom is near. Oh, I pray to God you're catching what God is saying. Not me. This is what I believe God has asked us to say today. If you have kingdom mentality, the things of this world will not disturb you. Because your, your, your source and your supply is from the kingdom bringing it into this world. In other words, it's from the Spirit of God, God's domain into this world. Not trying to be in this world and trying to be holy and spiritual. You'll fail and we do fail because of that. Kingdom is the influence of a king over an area. The king of England in the old days had influence and the queen of England as influence in the area owned by the crown, being the king's kingdom. So anywhere in England, she has total influence by agreement only, which is formed Great Britain, was a grip between Scotland and England, not Wales. That's what Great Britain is, Scotland and England. She has influence through that agreement. That's her kingdom. She is the authority in the land. The governing body is called the government. But she is the authority. That's no different for a king. She's still a queen, but she's a king. She acts on that um, principle. That system. So a kingdom is an area influenced by a king. We have a king, King Jesus. We have a king, the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, and the Holy of Holies. And we have a kingdom. It's called a spiritual realm. The king of the realm. It's the spiritual realm. Our kingdom is not of this world. Amen. Jesus said, I think it was to Herod, no, to Pilate, if my kingdom was of this world, I would fall down. I'm paraphrasing. But we're, we're, we're earthly motivated. The things of this earth, the motivation of this earth is money. If I'm wrong, shout me down. Someone shout me down if I'm wrong. You can't because I'm right. You all know, you all work for what? Money. Because you can't grow your food, because you can't live in community and look after each other, you all work for money. And you all work for 
individuals first. That's the motivation of the world. Money, capitalism, money. Go to Luke 16. Luke 16, verse 13. Luke is just before John. And John is just after Luke. And it says, no one, no one can serve two masters. No one. Look at the person next to you. Tell them no one. Tell them no one. No one. Now tell them no one can no serve one. two masters. <laughs> tell them, come on, tell each other. No one can serve. Heather, no one can serve two masters. No one can serve now you tell me. Yeah. It's not possible. It's not possible to serve two masters and be loyal and be faithful and be true to yourself. You are walking in all evil of evil when you serve two masters. Think about it very, very deeply. It's an horrendous mentality, it's an horrendous lifestyle to serve two masters. I cannot imagine, I'll use this as an example, I cannot imagine I serve my wife as my helpmate, she's my wife, she's my friend, she's my helpmate, she's all that I can think of that makes me who I am with Christ in the world. I can't serve another woman. I can't even get it in my head because I can't imagine how I can give all my energy to my wife in that sense of the masterly and then do the same to another master because how am I going to split myself? God says you become one. How am I going to split my... I can't imagine how you can serve two masters because you're never going to be true to either which means you are, uh, are in a dangerous place as a, as a person, humanly and spiritually. Christ says you can't serve two masters. The master of this world is money, power, image. Look at the money in advertising nowadays. These footballers get paid fortunes only because of advertising. Same with the boxers. Ratu's a professional boxer, he'll tell you. Until you get into the big fights and the advertising, you don't earn any money. It costs you money. The master of this world is money. And you can't serve both. But if you go to Matthew, I think it's 6.33. Go to Matthew 6.33. I can only use the word of God because we know that's the truth. Someone could have said amen there. Yeah. That's good. Delayed action, but I'll accept it. And what does it read? Let's go from verse 28 down to 34. Can you read that, Matthew, Chris? Matthew 6, 28 down to 34. I'm closing. Why do you worry about flowers? <laughs> See how the flowers of the field grow? They do not labor or spin. Mm -hmm. Yet I tell you that not even Solomon in all his splendor 
was dressed like one of these. Mm -hmm. That is how God clothed the grass of the field. Stop there a minute. Not even Solomon in all his splendor. Do you know to this day they still can't account for the total figure of his wealth. We can count Bill Gates to the penny. But Solomon's splendor and wealth, you can't even put a figure on it to this day. How much more we have than what he had? Carry on. If that is how God clothes the grass of the field, mm -hmm. which is here today and tomorrow is thrown into the fire, will he not much more clothe you? Mm -hmm. You of ill faith. So do not worry, saying, What shall we eat? Or what shall we drink? Or what shall we wear? For the pagans, run after all these things yeah. and your heavenly father knows that you need them but seek first his kingdom and his righteousness and all these things will be given to you as well seek first his kingdom and his righteousness that word righteous means right standing that's the basic simple term right standing your right standing is in Christ and be with Christ before God that makes you righteous. That's the simple way of putting it. Seek you first, in other words, right standing in Christ. The one who paid the price on the cross in him. That's why we had communion. The remembrance that we are in Christ. And it's through that that we can face God and have that holy communion with God and that righteousness, we're in right standing before God, therefore he can place his will on us to be done. That's the simple terms of what scripture is saying. Isaiah 9, 6, 7 and it says don't go there, I'll read it to you, you can read it afterwards. I should have brought my big print Bible. For a child is born to us, a son is given to us, and the government will rest on his shoulders. There will be his royal titles, wonderful counsellor, mighty God, everlasting father, prince of peace. His ever expanding peaceful government will never end. He will rule forever with fairness and justice from the throne of his ancestors David. The passionate commitment of the Lord Almighty will guarantee this. In other words, that's the kingdom that God is saying will come. As I is one of the greatest books, the foreteller of Christ coming in the Old Testament. The Old Testament being the testament of God. So the kingdom is a government of peace. It's a government of plenty. It's a government of compassion and caring. I made a note. The king in the kingdom system, the king has power, he has a will, he has laws, he has lordship, and that lord, that word lord means owner. That's what that word means. You, you know the term landlord. He's the land owner. He's the land owner. The Lord of that land. In other words, the owner of the land. That's what that word means. Lord means owner. So when you call Jesus Christ your Lord, you're calling you, what you're saying is, Christ owns me. That's what that word means. So his lordship and commonwealth. That's the principles, that's the heart, that's the, the substance of a king. It's about power. They have their constitution, the people's constitution. They have the people's laws. They have the people's ownership. My, my. They have the people's wealth. Again, my money, my power. They have the people's uh, individualism. It's all about you, selfishness. 
in the world's kingdom, it's all about you people. You, 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 you. In the king's kingdom, it's the king, it's the king, it's the king, it's the king. In other words, it's Christ. Only in Christ will we truly understand and live a kingdom life. Only in Jesus Christ. This day, I challenge you to think kingdom. I challenge you to test what I've just spoken from scripture with God in your prayer and physically with your word. Go and look up the kingdom, if not Google, just Google kingdom. Kingdom of God, Google it, see, see if I've said what is right. I haven't got this from Google by the way, but I'm just saying Google, they have everything. Even God stuff is on Google. You'll understand kingdom. I want us to get kingdom mentality, kingdom mentality. You know me, I believe totally in, in the kingdom. The kingdom of God. This church is not here for us, it's here for the kingdom of God. It's here so people can see, as small as we are, that God is here. Amen. And we're not here for money. We're not here to have a big building. We're here to show love of God. Because he so loved us, he gave his son. And I don't mean a roughy duffy love. I mean a love that can turn and say, oh, you're out of order. You're wrong. Or, I encourage you, let's go for that, come on. If you believe God's called you to do that, let's go for it, let's yeah. help you. But, in love. In love. We will only discover it if we understand the kingdom mentality. In that kingdom mentality, you can't help but love. Because it's God's kingdom. Now you have to let's just pray.